getting a hold of some of our stealth technology. Really? Okay. Um, and Voluntarily, as if we gave it to them, or they no, stole it? Uh, a plane was shot down. A stealth mm-hmm. plane was shot down. Mm-hmm. And it was a race to get to this technology. And we were beaten by this other government who once wanted this technology. You've got to now be careful. You've got to you got to tread lightly because yes. even though you're not in the military, you still can right, only I say can so still, much. So, um, an embassy was hit by an errant tomahawk missile. Okay. So imagine if that happens, and it was kind of like, oh, it was an accident. We're sorry, and it went away really fast. Mm-hmm. This is in the mid nineties. Okay, maybe yeah, we'll say mid nineties. All right. Um. So the embassy, which is sovereign soil of that country, mm-hmm. was hit by a Tomahawk missile, a, la- a, a satellite-guided missile, accidentally. Our embassy. Not ours. Uh, th- this foreign government that had gotten control of our, that had gotten. That was in a third country, not the U.S. Yes, not the, okay, got it. Country. Okay, got it. So I'm sorry, I should have no, That's okay. That. Um, innocent people were killed just to keep a, a little small piece of our ste- stealth technology secret. Now imagine if somebody had so the secrets. ones that so the ones that had the secrets were in this embassy. Yes, and that's why the embassy was hit. Right, and we all know our our embassies are just a branch, like a, a franchise of our intelligence. Community, sure, you know? sure. So, um, imagine if you had enough information that you could take down the leaders of most of the world powers in the world. What what lengths would the federal government would our government, not to mention Russia, Israel? Saudi Arabia, what lengths would they be willing to go to to stop you from giving out that information? Sure, which is which is probably what happened with Epstein because he because he had he had the dirt on so many people. Yes, and when he was stuck in that prison, actually out of their control in a way because they no longer controlled him. Yep. And if they sat him down and said, "Listen, son, you got you've got two options. You either go into the general population or you start to sing." And if he were to start to sing to some state government right. who was not affiliated with the big boys, mm-hmm. uh, there would have been held. Even to pay. the federal FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigation, there are good men working in the FBI mm-hmm. who want to see justice done, mm-hmm. no matter what, no matter what it means. They and don't will, and don't confuse the FBI with the CIA because they're, they're, they are competing factors. Yes, yeah. Even the CIA has good good guys working for them, of course, uh, and. Um, this is this what happened to Epstein being strangled when he's under suicide watch. In your opinion. In my opinion, he's strangled. In an in independent autopsy, it was ruled to be a homicide. Yeah, was it his, his brother, I think, who hired a, hired a, an independent uh, uh, coroner or coroner, not, medical examiner? Medical examiner, yeah. Yeah, and said, this guy wasn't, didn't kill himself. This Clearly guy was strangled. Homicide. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, probably because. When somebody's strangled, they fight back. Mm-hmm. Um, when somebody hangs themselves, they don't fight back unless they have a change of heart. Mm-hmm. Um, but usually they don't. So if you have claw marks on your neck where you're trying to claw the rope or whatever it was away, away from your neck, it, that's indicative of a homicide. Mm-hmm. The bruising is different. Um, the angle is different of the ligatures on your neck. All of that. Um he was supposed to be being watched by two guards and cameras time. and cameras there. Nobody, obviously they haven't released the camera footage. Well, I, I heard the cameras were down that there is no camera footage. Okay. So the cameras are down. Yeah. Uh, now these two prison guards are going to be charged with falsifying documents, prison documents. Cause they're saying that they logged in, that they were there and they weren't there. Right. Um, we'll see. Hopefully these guys can have their day in court. We'll see what happens. Um, or maybe they were paid enough to take the little prison time and, or whatever they're going to get. They'll probably won't go to prison. They'll probably just get fired and, and go, go on their merry way. Cause they're the just, Caribbean somewhere. Cause they're just common guys. Right. Um, so it's, it's all is, it's too much. This is too much. It, it's not, the story's not going to go away. The younger people now are not, they're calling bullshit on everything that's being done and said, and the internet is really keeping the story alive. And I hope it does. I, I hope the memes keep going. I hope the Twitter blows up with all this stuff. And well, the, the whole, the whole, the memes on social media to me are they're, they're funny. 
Okay. Yeah. Some are, some are funnier than others, but the thing is, 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 is because they're humorous, it's going to keep them out there. It's going to keep it in the eye. Right? And, and I don't, I don't think people are, 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 are laughing at the whole Epstein thing, but they're just laughing at the fact that the government actually believes that they're going to snow, snow this, right. Uh, pull this over the people's eyes and the, the folks aren't buying this. Right. There's, there's just too many uh, facts out there that point someplace. So it's the whole thing. You know, if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, looks like a duck, it's a duck. Right. So back in the day when Gary Webb uh, committed suicide by shooting so- himself in the head twice. Now who, now who was Gary Webb? Gary Webb was going to testify against the federal government and the, and the CIA about the drug running into this country going into Nina, Arkansas. Okay. Right. And the smells big, like the Clintons to me. Exactly. Okay. Um, and so this guy was part of that and he was going to testify in front of Congress about the, the drug running coming from South America into this country. Um, and he was pretty much untouchable up till one point uh, when he was going to testify in front of Congress. Mm-hmm. Um, he'd been arrested a number of times by the, by the DEA um, and let go. They just let, had to let him go because the governor called uh-huh. the governor of Arkansas at that time was Bill Clinton. Yeah. So the Clintons have been in, involved in this. And I'm not saying that the Clintons killed Epstein, but the Clintons have been involved in a lot of nefarious activities in this country for a long, long time. They know where a lot of bodies are buried. And they know where a lot of secrets. Well, and I did a, I did a podcast over a year ago on the whole vast Clinton conspiracy deal. And there are so many, so many uh, people who were killed suspiciously uh, around the Clintons. It's unbelievable. Uh, I mean, the, the list goes on and on and on. I mean, uh, Kevin Ivis and, and Don Henry, two 17 year olds, they were mysteriously crushed by a, st- a train back in 1987. Uh, where, where was that? This was in, uh, rural Arkansas. That's right. That's, yes. Because, uh, they had allegedly stumbled upon a plot to smuggle guns, uh, at an airport in, you know, Arkansas. Clinton was the governor and these guys, uh, yeah, they were both crushed by a train. Mm-hmm. Uh, a guy named, uh, Victor Razor, who was 53 years old. He was died in a small plane crash in 1992. Uh, he was a, a co-financier uh, of, of of Bill Clinton, uh, killed along with his son during a fishing vacation in Alaska. Uh, campaign press secretary Dee Dee Myers called Razor a major player in the Clinton organization. Just killed. Paul Tully, he died of an apparent heart attack in 1992. Now, he was a chain-smoking, heavy-drinking political consult- consultant who made three weighed 320 pounds. Um, but he actually died several weeks right before Clinton's first presidential election win. He had been elected a political director to the DNC during Clinton's rise, but uh, uh, he left and uh, knew some stuff and then died of a heart attack. I'm just, just coincidence after coincidence after coincidence. Uh, Herschel Friday, he was 70 years old, died in a small plane crash. Lots of them died in plane crashes, okay, mm-hmm. in uh, 1994. Uh Friday was a, a, an Arkansas lawyer who Richard Nixon had once considered for the ex- Supreme Court. He was also known as a benefactor to Bill Clinton serving on his finance committee, okay? Died in a plane crash. Just all these people who had links to the Clintons just mysteriously, they just, they just die. Right. Uh, Vince Foster, to me, was the biggest one. I mean, the whole Vince Foster thing, and I, I did a whole podcast. Maybe it wasn't a podcast. Maybe it was while I was on the radio. But uh, I did a whole thing on the Vince Foster thing. The, you know, the Vince Foster thing was just unbelievably bizarre about how he was found in Fort Marcy Park. And I've been to Fort Marcy Park. Mm-hmm. It's not that big, okay? Yeah. And he was missing. His car was there. They looked through the whole park with, uh, with dogs, searched the park, couldn't find him. Next day they went, and guess what? They found him underneath the <laughs> tree. Wow, we must have just missed him the first right. time. And it was a, it was a rainy day. Uh, um, the bottoms of his shoes weren't muddy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. I've worked with cadaver dogs closely, and they're not going to miss it. They're not going to miss a whole dead body. They're not going to miss a fingernail. Yeah, let alone a whole entire dead body. Exactly, exactly. It just just too many coincidences. It's um, and thank God we have the internet to keep these stories going because with the news cycle on the mainstream media, they don't want to talk. We saw what was it? ABC. Uh, didn't run the story on Epstein to keep it quiet. Yeah, they, they just didn't run it. They just didn't run it. They they totally ignored it. And if you think that's not on purpose, you're mistaken. 
Um, if you don't think that we could possibly have intelligence operatives working for major news organizations to put certain stories out there, you're mistaken. Yeah. Um, they cover all their bases. They cover all of them. Well, and the, the, the major news networks once upon a time, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say they were more honest. I think they were more honest than before, but they always did underreport much of the news. Yes. Um, uh, JFK was a uh, was a womanizer. Everybody knew it, but they didn't report on it. Uh, was that being dishonest? No, not really, because the way the media figures, look, okay, so the guy's a philanderer, so what? Mm-hmm. If we shut up about this, we'll get all the access to get all these other stories, which really are more important. Right. Okay. And the fact that he, you know, played around a little bit was not a big story. The fact that, uh, you know, his, his organization or his... Uh, uh, involvement with the Bay of Pigs and Cuba. Mm-hmm. Okay, that was a more important story when it came to the uh, what the people needed to know. Right, the national interest. Other press. Yeah, and the national interest. And so I guess I guess they I would say that they always have had to pick and choose, but perhaps the things they picked and chose were better. Yeah, does that make sense? I I think I would agree. Um, the news cycle being a, a, a money maker. They want to make money. Mm-hmm. Whatever's entertaining and make money. So they want to draw eyeballs so that you, they can show you their commercials. That's the only well, thing they're there for. Well, and that's, and be, because the news is different now, I, I understand why they do things that way because you've got to make money. Yes. Once upon time, you had time to hit ABC, CBS, NBC. You had three networks. Mm-hmm. That's it. In St. Louis, it was channel two, channel four, channel five. That's all you had. You had the little independent ones, but those were the only ones you had. You always had PBS with McNeil Lair, but that was different. Okay. You had Walter Cronkite, you had John Chancellor, and you had Huntley Brinkley. That's all you had. Okay. And back then the news shows really didn't make money. No, but the broadcasters were able to use the public airways at the bequest of the nation. They said, look, you give us good, honest news, and we'll let you broadcast your other drivel where you can make some money um, at other times. Okay, so uh, between 5.30 and 6, you're not going to make any money. Mm-hmm. But all the rest of the time, you're going to make tons of money. And during the 24-hour cycle, you've made a lot of money. And in return, we're going to let you use the public airways because the airwaves did not belong to ABC. If the government wanted to sh- start shut them down, they'd be gone. So they served at the bequest of the of the government. Right. Uh, they still do, by the way. Yes. And if you think the editors or public, whatever, producer, whoever's in charge of letting news hit the airways, if you think their phone doesn't ring at certain times, yeah. uh, come on, man. Like, definitely somebody from Washington, D.C. is going to call and say, hey, if you want to still get some stories out of us, you need to squash this. That's exactly right. That's what happens. Exactly right. So the news cycle has, has changed, but with the internet and now they always have to make money. Yes. So that's why you, and you don't have true, there's, there are very few, I won't say none, but there are very few truly unbiased, honestly reporting news services out there. Uh, one of the few that's out there and I pay a monthly fee to get them is the wall street journal. I believe it is about as unbiased as it can be. Uh, there are biases in the Wall Street Journal, but those are in their editorial pages, and they clearly mark them editorial, mm-hmm. which is fine. Yeah, as long as you're honest about it. Exactly. But the New York Times, to me, um, and I've said this before, I use the New York Times as a uh, as a source often because I don't believe they report lies. I don't think they do. If you read it in the New York Times, I think it's true. But where they fall down is by what they do not report. Yes. And it's incompetence by omission. So I came across an article from the New York Times involving Jeffrey Epstein. where He gave an interview to Kristen Luce, L-U-C-E. Okay. This came out August 12th, 2019. Elon Musk, one of you and I have a share affection for him. We do. Um, When he said he was going to buy up all the shares of Tesla and take it back private, that's a big no-no according to SEC. Right. Regulation. You can't can't make a statement like that. It definitely moved the needle and people started selling off their shares. Yeah. And he... he really had no intentions of doing no, that. He, he was just talking raising trash. the price. Yeah. yeah, he was just talking junk. Yeah. Um, so Epstein, being who he was, knowing numbers and having inside, the New York Times contacted him saying, hey, would you give us an in-confidence talk about this Tesla deal and what's going on? Um, he said, sure, I'll talk to you. Just You just can't mention my name because his literal words were, I'm radioactive. 
you can. I'll give what you. What did 